Kev, welcome to the show. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me. No worries, dude. Yeah, I thought I'd press record straight away because we were. I felt like we were already going to go into a lovely flow there before the show. So, <laughs> press the big button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no prep, nothing. I love it. I yeah, love it. yeah, Good absolutely. Trip. Yeah, no, mate. To to answer your question before the show, guys, um, just had a quick chat about uh, the UK going back into lockdown. We, we we just came out of lockdown here, and I think so. Where I'm from in Australia, uh, in the very south part of Australia, uh, in in Victoria, as the state of Victoria, I, I believe uh, we went through the harshest lockdown globally. But we actually don't have, we haven't had a case in about close to four weeks now. So it was interesting, interesting times. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard it was quite, you guys had it quite brutal out there. So are you allowed to fly and everything now then? Or I think, well, other states are just opening their borders now, slowly but surely to us. I think that the top part of Australia, Queensland, is going to be opening their borders uh, next week for us. Mm-hmm. But wow. if, if you had a look at lots of flight, uh, like I think Qantas, I think it was Qantas came out and said that, you know, no international travel unless it's, you know, unless you take the vaccine. So, Oh mate, the anti-vaxxers are going to be going nuts. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, mate, it's a, I tell you what, it's, a, it's, it's funny because there's been, it's, it's just been some interesting times of late and everything seems to be polarized. You know, you've got the, obviously you have the, the whole COVID thing, but then you've, you know, you've got the Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. and all these different movements all coming to the sort of surface. And I've, I often say that I feel like this is almost like we're being exposed to our collective shadow, mm. you know, on a, on, a, on a macro level. But then also that kind of, because we're forced to stay in, I don't know about you, but my, my own experience, especially on the first lockdown, I was just, there's some stuff where I said, all right, I'm going to learn. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to play chess. I'm going to learn Spanish. I'm going to yeah. do this, this, and this. I did none of that shit. <laughs> I was like, actually, and, I, and there, there was some stuff just I was dealing with. I just had to like, you know, I had the time and space to actually face it rather mm. than just be, you can, we can be all so, so busy, but life definitely moves at a different pace now. And I think there's, you know, mm. some of the, I'm not sure what was going on, but I, I just feel like there's a lot of stuff being exposed for us to kind of look at. And think, that's not, that's not quite right. Mm. Um, and also, you know, for us to have the opportunity to do that with ourselves, you know. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I think that, yeah, the collective shadow, I think uh, it's such a, such a lovely uh, pertinent phrase. You know, we have our own things that we need to deal with, but, you know, as a society and as, as a, as a, um, you know, human race, we also have things to deal with that have been, you know, suppressed or really not dealt with in the right ways for, hundreds of years now and things are rising and coming up to the top. And I, I can't help but uh, be uh, be an optimist in this kind of thing. And, you know, just, I just have a feeling like when, 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 when any resistance is placed, we have an incredible ability as individuals and as collectives to adapt to that resistance. And it always seems like if you look back in history, it always seems like the human race, just when it was about to go to shit, managed yeah. to survive. So I hope it's going to happen like that again. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. And I think that's probably why we resonate so much with like a, a good old underdog story or, yeah. you know, the kind of the hero's journey type situation, because I think that's pretty much the foundation of what, how our life does go, you know, that within that adversity is a time to sort of start again. And the kind of, you know, the whole death and, and, and reborn sort of mm. um, analogy is just, it's so pertinent, pertinent. And again, if things need to be sort of flattened and destroyed for not, in order for something else to, to grow. So, you know, the new norm, doesn't necessarily mean restrictive. It can mean it could be an opportunity to create, you know? Mm. Yeah. What was some of the stuff that was coming up for you? Well, for me, it was just like, Oh, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And like, I was still like, I was, so I've been in personal development for 12, 15 years, mm. you know, like doing coaching and other bits and pieces. And I was like, I, I, there was something niggling at me and I've, I've got this whole sort of, campaign and different products and the value of, you know, different ladder and all this type of stuff. And I wasn't quite, I wasn't quite sure. And I thought it was like, I need to work with other coaches or who are just coming up. And cause I have, I have that in my demographic when I do um, Bali trips and stuff like mm. that. And I thought it was that. And then, um, and last two or three years I've been getting into men's work and whatever. And I didn't really notice that, you know, the majority, 90% of my clients are now men and they mm. kind of, they are similar to me. So they're not, I'd like to think, cause I love the woo woo stuff. Right. 
But I, know, I, I like to go, I can go far out. I'm quite comfortable there and understanding some of the stuff. I go to, you know, I attend ceremonies and part of a spiritual community. But some of the guys I work with are very much in the business field and they are uh, kind of lost and or not feeling they've got the, the, the bits and pieces that, you know, society said that would make them feel truly happy, <laughs> only to be like miserable and not, and not only miserable, but guilty, feeling guilty for feeling, um, for feeling miserable because they, they live comfortable compared to most people. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's, that's an, and I've, I've gone through that cycle myself. I'm like, hang on a minute. Why am I like, I'm not doing that. Well, I must be need to, you know, must, I must need to earn more then, or I just need to party more. I just need to, a different person or a different girlfriend or a bigger house or, you know, more, 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 more. And you can get trapped on that cycle, which is interestingly enough, kind of where we're at on a massive, on a bigger scale as well. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, the, you know, the, what my point is, is that me doing my men's work journey, I was speaking to a coach of mine and he was saying, uh, um, I was talking about what I was doing as far as products and everything was concerned. He said, dude, why, why aren't you doing men's work then? Mm. Like, you know, specifically, like, in put your stake in the ground. This is what I do. I help men get this, 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 and this. And, yeah. and I'm like, oh shit! And the minute I said, minute he said it, I had like tingles. I had like, you know, whenever I get like goosebumps, I know I'm onto something. I need to pay attention to it. And that's and that's what's happened. So I've done that, and nothing really changed. Some people have said to me, "Well, I thought that's what you did anyway." You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you all knew, me, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but there's so it's weird because. And some posts, and I, when they're referring specifically to men's work or whatever, they they get loads more traction, loads more engagement, loads more DMs, and stuff just seems. You know, when you just hit something and it just feels like in a you're in alignment. Mm. And I'll be honest, um, this is going back to your question: is um, there's for me um, what I was dealing with in. Um, at the start of lockdown was that, that bit of confusion. And I had to, I recently looked at why I would kind of avoided looking at men's work or doing that because I take it when I go into something like, for instance, now I know I'm doing men's work. I'm, I'm studying as much as I can. I'm looking at other people, what they're doing. Um, and you know, all the stuff I can learn, the literature, not just on the, from the masculine, but the feminine as well, because we mm. need to understand both energies. Right. But Within all of that work, there's some deep work that I still need to do within myself. And it became apparent that there was still element of some um, father wounding for me to deal with. And um, and I didn't even realize, you know, I didn't even recognize it. It took someone else showing me that. I said, okay, well, that's one of the reasons you've not stepped fully into that is because mm-hmm. it's a, it, for me, it's a step up. And so I enjoy, I'm enjoying the challenge now of actually, you know, making sure I've got people that I can speak to. You know, I see, I, I see, a, I have what I call um, therapeutic supervision like once mm-hmm. a month as well. So I speak, speak with him and who's also um, specializes in, in men's work as well. Oh, wow. A senior to me as well. So I hold him in high, high regard, my Jungian um, trained and um, just a phenomenal person. So um, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to make sure I, I get the support and put, create the environment around me to support this kind of this journey so I can make sure that even though, so say these guys probably aren't as far along their own development path as I am, mm. that I can, I can see exactly where they are at any one time, you know, which is um, really important. And calling yourself out on your own bullshit. I'll give you an example. There was, <laughs> I took on a new client the other day and he kind of like, he got that kind of buyer's remorse. And I got this long winded text about how he's not really ready yet and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, and normally, you know, a few years back, I'm like, okay, mate, or whatever. And, but this time I looked at it again and I had that response and I looked at it and I thought, that's bullshit. Mm. Just, you're just like, you're, it's your ego sabotaging your growth. And that's mm. what it is because you, you have this fear that comes up and everything's uncertain. And then you want to resolve that tension by either running, which actually doesn't serve you, or staying there and just seeing what, hanging out with that tension a bit longer and seeing what comes, you know? So, um, I called him on it. <laughs> I just said, nah, dude, I think that's, I think it's your ego. I think it's your ego, dude. He's like, Oh my God, you're right. And I said, look, I wouldn't be even, cause the, as your coach, I wouldn't be, I'd be doing you a disservice if I should just let you walk. I mean, mm. and it's not even, it's not about the finances or whatever. It's not that, but I can see 
And the only reason I can see that is because I used to do the same shit. And mm. I probably will continue to if I don't catch myself, you know? Mm. So, um, yeah, it's just having that, that, that kind of awareness and that kind of, again, stepping into that space, you can just, you can just see it a lot easier. Yeah. So, I'm, so, I'm so interested in, in, in men's work, man. I've, I've, I'm doing a um, spiritual int- intimacy uh, weekend with uh, David Data and um, uh, nice. Yeah, coming up in 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 two weeks, um, and John Wyland. Sorry. Um, oh yeah, I love those guys. Yeah, yeah, I love them too, man. I, I learned so much from them, and and uh, the fact that I have this workshop means I still have a lot more to get, what, what <laughs> <more> to learn. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I, I find men's work so fascinating. It, I, I, I can't tell whether or not this is just anecdotal, but you see a lot. Of, I, I'm 27 now. I see a lot of kind of like 45, 50 year old males, and they seem. Um, you know, whether or not it's just me projecting that, but they seem like they don't have many kind of guy friends or, or they seem rather kind of separated or disillusioned. Um, you know, a perfect example is that Adam Sandler movie click where you, 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 you get into, I'm not sure if this is, I mean, obviously wouldn't go through this kind of thing as well, but it does seem to me like men's groups are more and more in demand now. And, you know, mm. wh- why do you think some of this, Mm, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting because I think like we're at the end, we're going to go a bit more spiritual. I think we're we're actually moving into a different age or a different time Mm. where that kind of, that, that, you know, the whole patriarchal sort of thing is not really working for us. Well, not in a sense of it can do, but less, can it be an an interpretation of the divine masculine and not Mm. just this kind of, get stuff done and then go more and more and more and creating at all costs, mm. you know? And then actually, I think we're the, I read a beautiful meme the other day or something that we're the only species that are the most intelligent species ever known. And yet we're the ones that we're actually ruining in our, you know, our own, damaging our own home, destroying our own home yeah. while we're in it for the sake of like, you know, pound notes. Mm. It's, uh, it's weird. And I think the, one of the things that we associate that to is the, of our own self-worth, or we believe that there's something outside of us to obtain, to get this kind of inner peace, that calm and that, you know, that centeredness. And, um, and it's, it's, it's kind of a lie. We've been mm. fed a lie for a long time. So it's sort of, you know, that I think it's the remnants that are around, because I'm 46 now. So those kind of, you see the, I've, I can see the type of person you're talking about. And I see the other people that I'm just like, hmm, I wonder if there's something more. Mm. You know, and then those uh, younger than me, have, you still have those, but I think more and more when you get, well, you know, to sub, sub 30s, it's, um, you know, people are start, start to question things more and think actually there's got to be a bit more to life than this, or they're more concerned about, you know, they are concerned about the planet. They want comfortable lives and, and everything else and to live well, mm. but it doesn't need to be, definitely doesn't need to be at the detriment of someone else uh, or other mm. people, like a kind of survival of the fittest mentality. Um, you know, and there was a, I think there was a lot of shame growing up um, in in men in two ways. Because the shame of, for me, I would say how we would treat the feminine. It was almost like there was this dysfunction of, of it. You know, I can remember watching like things like Carry On movies, and it's quite acceptable to slap a woman on the ass or give a give a load of stick in the office and all that type of stuff. It's just mm. when you think about it, that's absolutely insane now. Mm. You know, and. Um, and also our own managing our own shame around our kind of rage and our anger and stuff that can be our, you know, we do, and we try and suppress that and that kind of that inner, and that's part of us. We do have the ability. We do have a killer within us under the right circumstances. Anybody is capable of taking someone else's life, mm. you know, but it doesn't necessarily, and it's owning that, you know, but not, and but owning it, in a sense where you can, it doesn't come out dysfunctionally. It doesn't come out in rage or whatever. So there's so much been, there's been a lot of suppression um, for the women, for females too, but in men in particular, you know, they're not really sure how to act now. They can be over, you know, in, in my mind, it, it's almost like they can be oversensitive or, um, or just like still want to just show anger, aggression, and um, as their two sort of their go-to emotions. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and it's conditioning. It's, it's you know, it's, uh, it's uh, generational. 
Yes, just from what you see growing up and what your yeah. people saw growing up, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're I think there's another factor. So I work with young people as well. I think I work with young boys, funny enough, and I work with them primarily in the food and medium of boxing and physicality and stuff. Mm. But some of it's because they don't want to talk, obviously, uh, <laughs> for the most part. But um, well, after you build a bit of a relationship and a bit of rapport, over time, you there is some talking and some training, but. I think there's a, for whatever reason, there is just a shortage of male role, male role models. You know, there's just, mm. like, I don't know whether they just, men just disappear, the broken homes, all that type of stuff. Or you might see, you know, mum might get a boyfriend and then he disappears. It just seems to be like, it, you know, things happen, but I think it just shows a shortage of solid male uh, leaders that we can look to, you know? Mm. Um, and I think that's become a thing. So why are, why is boomed right now at this point in time? I think it just I think we again I think for us I think we're, anybody that's alive right now is here for a, a purpose. I truly believe that. It's, because for me, I'm a bit like you in your camp. What a time to be alive! Mm. I feel like we're I can't tell you what it is, but I feel we're on the cusp of something of some great change. I also feel prior to that great change happening, a lot of shady stuff has to come to the surface and be addressed. And the awkward conversations and everything else. I'm like, oh my God, I need to look at your way of your point of view. No, I not agree. You know, I might not agree with it, but I can accept it and then understand where you're coming from. You know, I'm trying to be a bit more open in that way. And that won't, it's not an overnight thing for sure. But you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but whenever you've, I've had a difficult conversation with say a partner or something like that, and you, you work through it and get through it that tightens you, right? That makes you, that bonds you. That's the stuff that bonds you. Mm. And I think that's what's happening. If we can get to that space, rather than throwing mud and slinging, you know, and you, and in continuing this division, which is, it seems media wise, it would seem like it's, that's people are really content on doing that. Mm. Um, to keep us separate. And it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. No anymore, you know. Mm. Doesn't feel right. I remember getting I got trolled on a post the other day and and rather than I just trying to understand where that person comes from, you know. I don't get me wrong, I won't get it mm. right all the time. I just I was just actually, actually into one of those open open spaces. And then again, someone who was shouting at me for like I don't know, they're just having a bad day. But I think there's so much tension in the air right now. Yeah that people are like, they can feel it. They're out there. They're kind of at their limits. So you have to kind of show some, show some compassion. Mm. But, yeah, no um, shit. I, I think that's why we're on the change. I think that's why the, the men's work is coming, coming um, forth because there's a lot of stuff that's being shown, you know, the Me Too movement and things like that, mm. just showing how dysfunctional we actually can be towards our, our feminine. Mm. But this is this is my point about um, optimism, right? Is that as soon as soon as, and we're all more, we're so much more connected now on social media, which is so lovely. But as mm. soon as there is a problem that's that really seems to be bubbling and boiling to the surface, oh, explore a page Instagram. All these dudes doing men's work. It almost mm. seems like there's just this kind of. As soon as there's a problem, people already have a solution now. Now, sure. obviously, you can't take a horse to water, and you have to be willing to pay you and not let your ego get in front of it and be like, you know what, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually need to do this shit right now. I needed this work. But it just, I always have that natural kind of lenience to positivity. Um, mm. What was that guy trolling you about? On Like, what was your post on social media? Um, I think it was something about, what did I say? One of my posts saying is like, can we normalize men needing emotional support? And his comment was something about normalizing, uh, can we normalize men not being... Um, not being defect, acting like defective women. <laughs> like, Shit. He's uh, a bad <laughs> like, there's so much in that. Yeah. There was <laughs> so much in that statement alone. Yeah. And I, I asked him, point. so that's an interesting concept. That's an interesting point of view. Could you elaborate some more? And can you explain, could you actually yeah. define what a defective woman is? <laughs> you know, so, um, and then he, he, someone else jumped, chimed in and said, uh, what did he say? Oh, yeah, the men should be stoic and emotional and all these other things. Otherwise, a woman sees us weak. And I kind of, I did a video afterwards because for me, I realized that I, the guy actually sent me a link to a, 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 
um, a blog about women, um, about men's vulnerability and it's gone too far the other way and actually this men parlaying vulnerability is just like, it's, it's just seen the women or just see them as weak and all this type of stuff. And I thought, I thought first of all, parlaying for me to showing, you know, showing vulnerability off on something like that is, that's manipulation if you're trying to do it that way. And I just, I, I get what, there is evidence to say that women, if you lose your, uh, if you can't present your vulnerability in a, in a, from a, in a structured manner, rather than having completely collapse, you know, John, uh, John Wyland and David David both speak about this. Mm-hmm. Um, then yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. However, you can still show vulnerability in my, in my mind, you can still show vulnerability and from a place of stru- structure, you can still lead with vulnerability from a place of structure, you know, and, um, and, and I've said this in my in the video as well. So I, I think women actually want that. They do want that, and they want a man that can do that. They don't want that guy that could just stoic and mm. can't can't access his emotions and just like they might be attracted to that initially. Because, you know the, the the strength, but after we can't if you can't get through to your man, they just go. They just yeah, they won't feel safe. Yeah, so yeah, they won't. Well, they just won't feel safe. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. But for every, and I thought, well, these two guys were, it was great because for me, I thought, well, I can see I straight away. I was like, those two people spoke about it, but I wonder how many people are thinking the same thing, mm. you know, or believe that. And they truly believe it, you know, and I'm like, he, and I sent him some, some guys to follow. And I sent him a, um, a book called Warrior King, uh, King Warrior, Love and Magician and, um, or Magician Lover. But, um, yeah. It was, um, he didn't come back to me, but equally it was just an opportunity to, yeah, it was just an opportunity to just share do- a dialogue and I actually think, oh, that's interesting. Why, why are you thinking like that? Mm. And me being me, I'm like, I'm looking at it thinking, well, A, my post wasn't just about <laughs> just women in relationships. So I'm like, yeah, just that as a tiny bit. <laughs> so I'm like, I, so straight, I can see there's massive, I'm like, okay, well, there's, and again, I feel that within that statement, I would be, I feel that there's some insecurity around how the, how you interact with the woman. Yeah. Whether by those, by those comments, by those comments alone, how they, how you, inter, how you interact. And um, so you feel like you have to put this facade on and that's not mm. necessarily the case. You see what I mean? And from, for me, if the, where does that insecurity come from? Is that then uh, a, a a, a relationship with your own feminine that needs to be discovered? Is it a relationship with like, you know, is there some wounding there um, from the feminine? Have you been like, you know, completely blown out, uh, you know, or embarrassed or you're, you, there's a, is there a mother wound there? There's, there's layers to it. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to call anybody out on that, but I, that was just my humble opinion on what was going on. Mm. Um, just, just, just judging by their statements. And it's, um, and again, and I did, and I said this in the video. If you fair enough, if because you have to, I have to be open to this. If he has that strategy works for him, stoic and emotional and everything else, and he has a partner that actually likes that, then it's, 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 that's his strategy and it's working. But from most men, I don't think that they they try that and suppress it, and that energy doesn't go anywhere; it just stays stuck. You know, yeah. so they then numb, they then numb it. Do you know what I mean? It's alcohol, gambling, porn, social media, food, those types of things. And, you know, those outlets or they just misplace their right anger, rage or something and explode all over the, you know. And again, that's a complete loss of structure as well. So you're not going to feel safe, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah. And violence, you know, and that, that type of stuff comes, yeah. comes out. You have to be really mindful of that because we do know and this is me speaking from experience as well. I was one of those kind of people that I just, I didn't feel safe to express my emotions or sometimes I just didn't even know I was doing it. So I'd be disassociated from a, to somebody else having feelings. And, mm-hmm. and it's taken a lot of training and a lot of work to, to even get to that rather than be so, so cold, but it's, mm-hmm. it's done from a space of protection, but it, it is actually, if I was to continue longer term, it'd be more harmful. Yeah, because I had some. I had some of those vices that would try to numb everything else, you know. So um, yeah, but I mean, 
even just as a strategy, like I, you've got to give the devil his due. And I like what you did there when you're like, you know, if that, if that's working for him and his partner, then great as a strategy. But one thing I've learned uh, being in a long-term relationship is that it's hard to like maintain a strategy other than yeah, right. being who you are. Like, fuck yeah. that, man. I'm too lazy to like hold up a strategy. <laughs> I just right. want to be yeah, me, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And that, and that's what I mean. I, there's a lot of guys. Um, I remember a long time ago, I was working with a guy and he was going, going about this book and it's like a pickup artist book. I can't even oh, tell yeah. you. It's one of the famous ones. And to be fair, he would pick up girls all the time, but he couldn't hold on to one. Yeah. <laughs> he, couldn't hold on, he couldn't hold on to them. And then the reason being is because he, he had to drop at some point, he had to drop that facade or whatever. And you just, I think people know if you're being authentic on that. Mm. You know, you you just feel it. You know, yeah. I see off about that guy. He's not, you know, he feels like it's it's a, it's a show or it's a mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, one one of the one of the five regrets of the dying uh, is that I wish I was more me. You know, I wish I was more mm. I, like it's more. I, I mean, I look at it from a selfish perspective. You know, it's like, oh yeah, dude, I've got all these girls, got all this facade, or like my relationship's going really well because I'm holding this facade. It's like, but at the end of the day, like I'm being someone who I'm not you know, and maybe at the end of the day, if I'm really being more of who I am, I'll find someone or I might pick up less or whatever, but, um, I'll, I'll just have much more fun. Cause at the end of the day, when your eyes close, you know, for a final time, the only thing you're thinking about is how you rode the, 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 the boat, you know, and mm. I, I just, uh, I, I have a natural proclivity for selfishness and that my, my work is in being more selfless, but, uh, sure. I can't get away from that idea, man. I just like, I want to have a, I want to have a meaningful life. Yeah. Yeah. And be fully there. Oh, that's beautiful actually to be fully you. And I think it takes some, when you can do that and get to a point where actually by being fully you, you may and accept that you're not going to be for everybody. I think that's one of the main things you want to, there's a massive, you know, so the desire to be safe and belong is a real thing, you know? So no one likes to be like, of as disliked or anything like that mm, of course. after a while you, just, you get comfortable with it because you realize that it just puts more value on those that actually do want to be around you and do love you for who you are because they're the, mm. they're the special one and it sounds like so corny and like obvious but it's like it's so obvious we're trying to make it more difficult than it actually is yep. you know and it's just like you know your vibe what's that line your vibe attracts your tribe or something like that it's so true mm. You know, there's just like, there's certain people that are like, oh, I can't listen to this dude at all. And I, I'm cool with that, you know, but the guys that I want to serve are just the ones that I kind of will resonate with. And that's, that's it. And I think that's another time that we're in now, which we're probably quite lucky in a sense, because we've been, you know, not even, even sort of 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, that wasn't the case. You had to deal with everybody. But now you can, you've got these mediums and you either resonate with someone or you don't, but they, you know, straight away, they've kind of, I was going to say bought in or sold. That sounds a bit commercial and cold, but what I'm saying is there's a kind of, there's a connection with you. They, you know, there's a, a kind of a, a known like and trust type of feel of things, you know, straight away before you even get on a call with somebody now. I just, I, and I love that. So oh, that resonated, that post resonated with me or whatever. It's just nice having conversations with people and because, and if you're open to learning and serving somebody, then that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I think. Mm. Yeah, there, there are so many things to be grateful for in this day and age. There's a lot of shit going on, but you know the, the way I think you and I see the world definitely is that it's a it's a chance for growth. You know, whenever whenever a problem arises, a solution is just around the corner if we if we want to see it like that way. You, you said that you got into personal development work about 12 years ago. That that was like before it was cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's just like a thing. It's like, what is that? It's just like, yeah. it's like, it's like uncool. <laughs> yeah, very uncool. Perfect. Very uncool. Yeah, yeah. Coaching and yeah. So I started. I started off in NLP. Then I started mm. doing coaching. Then I did um, uh, hypnotherapy. Oh wow! I've done all sorts of mindfulness. I had bits and pieces, just loads of different modalities. But I, it's funny because I went into NLP and hypnotherapy in particular because I wasn't. I've and yeah, I've always had this spiritual element to me, but I've, in my mind, and even this goes to show what times we were in, um, it is easier, it's easier to be accepted if you have those types of things, because it's kind of it's ther- more therapeutic. People know yeah. what a hypnotherapist is. They don't really know what a coach is. Yeah. They definitely don't know what, 
not interested in any meditation, uh, you know, now they're all over. If you're a meditation teacher, you know, but at the time, no, all mindfulness for that matter. I didn't really know what that was. So, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So what was, what brought you into the world of personal development at, at a time when it wasn't really a, a world? <laughs> And all of this goes back to like what we were saying at the start, and it was crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a crisis. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it was, um, I, I've always been quite entrepreneurial. I had different businesses and whatever. And this particular business was, I was in construction recruitment. And I was, so I supply anything from labor to cleaners to, to management and stuff like that. And I worked out a way where I could actually not only just supply the labor, but for some of these other companies that weren't so big and didn't have, or they always had cash flow issues, I could use, I had a, um, what do they call it? A factoring company. So I had a credit line essentially that could like mm. fund, um, fund all their wages. Uh, so pay all their, all their, their companies wages. And then we would invoice their company and do it that way. Mm. And, um, it was amazing. So I was just, I was making a ton of money. Um, a couple of houses had the kind of the, the girlfriend that everyone looked like they look off. um, and I, a couple of cars, and I thought that, well, wow. this is life. And it's funny, it's not until looking back now, I think, oh, I hated that job. <laughs> you know, I hated it. But, so I'm not sure what it's like in Australia, but in, this, in the UK, they, there's, every now and again, the bigger firms will systematically withhold payment from the smaller firms, and some of them will drop off, and, and then that margin stays on their bottom line, right? So that happens now and again, and um, then you have to kind of, wind up your company and then start again. And I got caught, caught up in one of those cycles. Yeah. So all my companies that I was serving did, did. So I had four or five companies that I was looking after servicing, wow. but they all worked for the, for two main ones that did the same sort of thing. So the, you know, the shit rolls downhill essentially. Yeah. So cut a long story short, I was in, I was deep in debt to, you know, maybe three, 400,000, a lot of money. Um, I remember, I always remember a guy coming to my house it was around Christmas time crying, uh, chipper where a chippy had no money and his missus, him and his missus are rowing and I give him my last 500 pounds. I was just like, oh my God. Wow. And what's interesting is the environment, it was like, you know, they'd be ringing and screaming, it don't matter what time in the morning it is, because I do interior fit outs, so shop fitting and stuff, they'd ring, where's my fucking, where's this, where's that, do you know what I mean? And I've got to try and find someone to go up there um, and the guys were like earning a lot of money on a weekly basis, but they're living hand to mouth. So what, what would happen is they would spend it because they're working 18 hours or whatever. The environment was like very much work hard, play hard, yeah. loads of cocaine, strippers, gambling, alcohol, those types of things. They'd be away, send a bit of money home to the, to the missus, keep her quiet. And then the rest would just get, they just, every time they'd be asking for subs. I'm like, dude, you're in my, you take him more home than I am. Yeah. And yet you're like, I don't get it. So um, anyway, so that happened. I had to let go of my houses, lost the car. And then at the same time, decided to break up with the, with the girlfriend because we were just in a very toxic place. Um, and that wasn't good. I didn't recognize myself really. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was living, um, I, I moved out, I lived above a, a fish and chip shop on a, on a mattress living on a mattress above there and I used to go down and eat chips. I, was, yes. I didn't even recognize, I didn't even realize that I was depressed, but I actually was. And then I decided uh-huh. to go to a school. Yeah, so that happened. I was there for like six months. I was, um, I went to a school reunion and I hate those things. I decided to go to, I, I, I decided to go to this one and I met a friend of mine that was uh, just come back from Ireland and he said, oh, I'm, I've, I'm doing, um, I'm a CBT, I'm a psychotherapist and a, hypnoth- and a hypnotherapist. So um, I said, I want to keep, he said he wants to keep his hours up. So do you want to do some work with me? I said, oh, yeah, all right. So I started doing that. It soon became apparent. I was getting my confidence back and that was it. I just got the bug. I was like, I want to do what you do. You know, I think I could do this. Yeah. And um, he, because uh, I've always, I've studied martial arts as well for a long time and there was a, there was some of the stuff we did was a lot along the Zen philosophy and all that type of stuff. And we, you know, even in our the school I was in, I watched what the bleep and the mm-hmm. secret, certain things like that. That was like, Oh, that's completely different to what I'm, I'm used to, mm-hmm. I'm used to thinking. So I was just, I call it those, that la that year, I called it the sort of the year of uh, the university of YouTube. So I'd literally yes. fall asleep 
Yes, fall asleep listening to like, you know, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Tony Robbins, anybody I could get my hands on, you know? Um, and then I finally got in a place where I was managed to get some sort of part-time job and then started um, paying for courses. And then it's just, it, it just carried on from there, really. Mm. That's amazing, man. I just can't believe, like, you say something like the University of YouTube now in 2020 makes a hell of a lot of sense. But 2008, 2009, 2010, like, mm. no one's doing that. You know, mm. no one's listening to podcasts. No one's doing what you do. That's like a really pragmatic approach to life. If you, I mean, it sounds like you always have had that because you had that entrepreneurial mindset and, and all that kind of thing. But uh, mm. yeah, it's just, to put it into context for everyone, I think that's important. You know, no one's doing this pre 2010, except you're kind of doing this. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, like I say, what's interesting, it, it still blows my mind now when you start looking at some of these, how old some of these books are, yep. you know, God, how small, you know, we, I say that and I'm like, God, this book was written in 1970 something. I'm like, <laughs> damn, how many people must have read this book? 10, <laughs> yeah. you know, but so we just, we definitely, and I've always said this to um, some people that, you know, is it, and I've come to my own conclusion now, but at the time I was like, is it because I'm in the same environment that I saw, I see other people doing the same mm-hmm. sort of thing or is it expanding? And I, I can safely say, I think it's definitely expanding now, you know, but at yeah. the time it just felt like there's a few niche people and then you start to, you go to a few seminars and you see the same people there and whatever. But um, after a while it started, it started to grow. And I think obviously the States had the jump on us for sure mm-hmm. in the UK uh, we, we, we're a bit kind of uptight in the UK and a bit reserved and everything else. And a lot of some of that stuff is very Americanized and we don't want to, you know, we don't get up and start massaging each other and high-fiving each other and shit oh, like exactly. that. Exactly. I've done it. It's uncomfortable. We're like, yeah. oh, I don't, it feels a bit icky, but all right. <laughs> the contents go, yeah, dancing. I know. We've all, I've done it, but I'm like, it's not, that's not me. That's just not my thing either, but it's not yeah. Yeah, sitting exactly. in, in the UK. Yeah. Um, I get all that, but, though, like, because you can you can understand that physiology changes the way you think. Yeah, and you massively. Get yeah. into it, you're like, oh, yeah, it feels amazing. Yeah, yeah. We're the same as you, man. We're, we're all convicts from the UK down here, so that's it. Oh, of course, you know, yeah, yeah. We all, we all have that kind of tall poppy syndrome thing too. Don't get ahead of yourself, like that's it. Yeah, which, which, which can be really yeah. imp- like it can really inhibit our growth. But then mm. you know we look in America and go, maybe they're going too far. So we both need to kind of like find that happy place. Mm, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that was, that's, that's the kind of, that was the journey. And I think it's been, I think learning that and going, kind of going back to sort of, I realized how important environment really is as well. Mm. Having kind of certain people around you and other people, not so much. And as, as I was growing, I was noticing some of the people, obviously I wasn't in that kind of that work environment anymore. And the types of uh, women, and you know, there's, that's another story about the types of women I was attracting. Mm. Um, and the friends I was keeping, and it's funny because I'm just, some of my friends that I didn't think I thought I'd always speak to, they just disappeared, you know. And it's not yeah. like it's not like we fell out or anything. They're just kind of just gone. Yeah. And it's almost like, and that for me, that shows a different. It, you know, there really is. That is a great example of how we can live, and we're living in the same world, but experiencing a completely different reality. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I think my environment has definitely helped me helped me with my growth and being selective around that. And it's just kind of, it makes it easier to be, you know, just put yourself in a, in a place and like, and that stuff and thinking and everything else just rubs off on you. It really, it really does. And, and energy. Mm. You, and we can create these environments online now. Like, you know, look, look at how you and I hooked up, dude. Like we, yeah, right. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Yeah, exactly. That's what I yeah. love about doing a podcast. You know, this, this podcast is so uh, it's just so fun. I just, I tell everyone like, just do a podcast. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just yeah. used to catch up with like a potential stranger an acquaintance and then just become best mates with them. It's just so, yeah, right. so fun, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I completely agree. I completely agree. That's good. There was a, what else was I going to say to you? There was something else. Um, about environment. No, I've lost it. No, I've lost it. I think if I remember, I'll, I'll come back to you. Yeah. I think one thing I wanted to mention before was uh, you were talking about coming into a new age now and people are starting to see that, uh, you know, old ways of doing things where it's just competition at old, at all costs, you know, that kind of like um, dark side to capitalism um, 
is, is we're starting to we're starting to change and see that. You know, I, I always I always consider these things from a multifactorial approach. It's not you know there are people that are absolutist out there and they say it's just because men oppress women or it's yeah, yeah. just because capitalism is bad or it's you know just because we yeah, need sure. to protect the environment. Obviously, these things are so complex. You know, one of the things. Yeah. Um, um, women's, women's, women's emancipation. So, you know, but, but just technology as well and having more autonomy over their reproduction, uh, technology as well, meaning that we can all work from home. We don't have to pick up heavy things and build buildings and stand on the top of skyscrapers without any kind of protection gear. Um, all these things are changing and there's so many complex reasons as to why they are. Nevertheless, the fact that we are now starting to see that competition, at all costs, isn't what we want as a society. What we really want now, uh, at least what I want, is is more consciousness around what we're building and how we're creating. You know, and mm-hmm. and there's that that social responsibility behind every product. You know, it's I'm not just going to if I'm going to make something or use plastic, you know, a portion of that's going to go to uh, the Amazon or if I'm going to make these, these new lights, it's uh, you know, it's led it's, 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 it's healthy. It's good for the environment. That, that really, that really excites me now. And I worry sometimes um, or I try to consider as to whether or not I'm just in these really tight echo chambers surrounded by people that all believe and agree with me. But I do also at the same time think that it's not just, who I'm surrounded by and what I see online, more people as we are becoming more and more connected are starting to recognize that these things affect all of us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I I agree. Yeah. And also one of the things I find most really frustrating is that some of the stuff isn't really, it's so difficult to get quality information or good quality information. There's a lot of misdirection, a lot of, you know, even our, our own algorithms that we use are, um, designed to give us just more of what we like we like and what we search for so therefore our cognitive bias becomes more and more so rather than our minds expanding if we're not mindful of it it, it actually stays the same or actually starts to diminish mm. you know and i think um but that being said i think there is a lot of a lot of some really beautiful movements going on and things like that so for me i'm, I'm working in the investment field as well i still have an investment company and i'm starting you know after once we get to a certain amount i think the idea is that we start looking at how we can create, because myself and my business partner are very much about creating win-win. So win-wins for the clients, the introducers, our, and ourselves, obviously, and the people that we um, invest the products into. So it would be no different then in doing something that helps with, I don't know, using research for psilocybin or something like that for help, for helping mental mm-hmm. health or awesome. um, renewable energies or anything like that, because it's nothing is... The structure is the same. We just create a structure and then work out how that is. And it, it, to go back into, to do something that goes back into helping is um, a, a, a real sort of value of mine. Is, as mm. I, maybe as I get older, I'm not, I think it's always there, but I'm just thinking just, again, it's like creative relevant. And today I was having a conversation with my coach about one of the, one of the products that we're going to be doing where 50% will go back in, because it's men's work, 50% will go back into a men's, health mental health charity yeah you know so to me it just makes sense it's a it's something about continuing that cycle and then at a moment where we're just so disjointed and and, and um separate and d- are divided that's why we have all this kind of uh illness it feels like illness and because we're not we're not together we're not we're not like one kind of uh neuro like network even though we are you know we are all, you know that kind of we are all one and we're all connected yeah. it makes perfect sense you know i was with somebody the other day and they were talking about he used a be this is my uh, my coach he used this beautiful analogy so he, he he was a tree surgeon so he started um he was talking about um how forests and everything else have like this kind of this network underneath so if one tree is ill or under attack in one side of the forest they can actually send that information goes through and it sends it that way to help. Mm-hmm. So that's it, it, and that's how they thrive. And that's how, it, you know, and for me, I was like, Oh, it fills me with a bit of sadness when you realize what's going on in, you know, Brazil and the rainforest and, and stuff like that. And also there's a, there's a thing called the HS2 over here. They're putting this massive electric train rail 
you know, chopping down a load of trees up in there. It's insane. But equally, I'm like, well, surely that when you look at all, any other organism, they all act that way, mm. you know? And mm. in fact, it, it's, and it's the same within our own human structure, but mm. for some reason, we think there's such an individuation, there's such a... yeah. A separateness about us that it's just it, I don't I think also this is part of our shadow element is just that we can't do this on our by ourselves we're not meant to be you know so the, you know community I think it's going to come back around that way I've, I like the way of I like the idea of community and working with community farmers and you getting your getting your produce from you know uh, community programs and, and things like that set up um it'd be nice to go back to that way. I think where these big kind of conglomerate things that are just solely focused on capitalism. Well, why yeah. Not? yeah. 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 It, I mean, one of the things I always try to figure out is, is where's the, where's the middle ground here? Like where am I too biased to one side or too much? Where am I too yin and, and not enough yang, you know? Sure. Yeah. 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 In, in my early 20s, I was obsessed with, with, uh, you know, Carl Jung and, and finding purpose and finding meaning. And I, I took on that very kind of religious individualistic approach to life. And, mm. you know, in, in the economic world, the political world, uh, neoliberalism was making a hell of a lot of sense to me because power to the individual, you know, we, we, we can mm. take freedom and rights over ourselves and we can do that. It still makes a hell of a lot of sense to me, but coming back to that sociocentric way of viewing the world, I still don't think, I don't think that, anything that you and I are talking about uh, erodes a personal sense of self. I mean, no. take, take for what you just said, for example, you have consciously decided if anyone can hear that, that's my partner making a smoothie in the background. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just like a really long, bizarre fart. I'm telling you, it's not that guy. <laughs> but that, that idea you have Kevin consciously decided to give some of your earnings to uh, men's health work. That is an individual, individualistic decision, you know, that, that helps society at large. I, I, and I would argue that what you do there, uh, provides more meaning in your life than, uh, than, than someone out there just pursuing meaning, meaning, meaning at all costs. Like I used to do it in my early twenties. Yeah, I suppose it, I suppose it does. And it's, I think, like you say, it's just, there's something about, I like doing it that way as well because it's not about look at me or anything else like that. I will tell people that I'm buying this product. It's not me. You're do- I've just, I've just created something. This is the one. And that's my, I would say that's probably one of my gifts. I've created something. So your, some of your funds are going there. So it's not me that's doing it. You're doing it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, so we're, I'm not all, all right, better still, we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. So we're all, we're all helping each other. You're actually helping a guy you'll never, ever meet. Yeah. How cool is that? How cool mm. is that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, and I think that's, um, so that, that type of cyclical type of process, I'm, I'm very, I like say I'm quite positive and very, you can be a bit utopian as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're all friends, but, we're all friends. Uh, Kumbaya. Yeah. Can't we, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, why can't we, why can't we do that? Why can't that happen in different, in different areas, you know? Mm, mm. Yeah, but again, there's going to be a collapse and crisis, you know, and part of the crisis, I think there's going to be a collapse first in order for us to have a look and think, okay, well, that didn't really work. What can we, really, what can we do now? Yeah, yeah. And also looking back on the past with a sense of gratitude as well. And, you know, mm. just because as a society now, hopefully we're not in our own echo chamber here, but as a society now, we're starting to see that capitalism at all costs, you know, um, without some kind of, socialistic aspect to it, you know, whether that's healthcare or education or something, you know, if it's just pure capitalism can leave a hell of a lot of people impoverished at the bottom. Um, we're starting to see now that we have the technology available for us to, to switch things there. That doesn't mean, and this is me talking from what I believe, but it doesn't mean that capitalism in and of itself, it's bad. It's not, it's, it's one of the only systems that we've had, uh, to date that uh that is, has has made both the poor rich and the rich rich you know it's not just communism where everyone suffered and millions of, yeah, millions yeah. of people died we don't want to go there but can we from that point that you were making there with a the utopian mindset well surely if we have got this far there's something else that we can even do you know there's something 
who knows what kind of system, what kind of word, you know, we'll be using in 200 years. It's going to be even better. And we'll look back on capitalism and go, yeah, that was working then, but we had this thing now, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's exciting time. What a time to be alive, man. Mm. What a time to be alive is definitely that. I think one of the things, um, for whatever reason, thinking about it, as you were speaking, then there seems to be a lot of fear pushed. So there's a, the fear of losing something or the fear mm-hmm. of um, whatever, or f- you know, feeling a certain way or feeling bad about something. There's that. There's a lot of our energy, our, our world is driven by that. Oh, you, you know, you're going to be poor if you don't do this or you don't do that or mm-hmm. you're going to be, you know, extradited from, from this group or all that type of stuff is, um, it forces our, you know, if we're not mindful of it, impacts our decisions on a on a on a daily basis, you know, so you can be quite oh, a bit, things are a bit tight. I need to do and you're doing stuff out of either desperation or or whatever, or doing something you don't really want to do because you're actually being driven by your the motivation is fear or a kind of away from behavior or um you know or thought process. Whereas yes. the towards I think I don't get me wrong, I think there's that's it can be a springboard. But it, I don't think over for over long term, I don't think it, it can be sustained. You know, because the minute you get a, away from something, you kind of you kind of relax anyway. Whereas if you go looking to go for something, it's kind of it's normally a longer process, and there's always something else to go for. But you can do it in a way that's not dysfunctional. It's just a, like you're doing it from a space of like I'm going towards love. Okay, great. I've got, what else would I love to create? What else would I love to create? You know, so. Um, rather than trying to run from something. Did you, does that come up a lot in, in men's work, that, that idea of when, when fear um, manifests itself, there's that male proclivity to fix the problem straight away. Fix it, coming from fear. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I need to fix it. What's going on? Yeah. You know, I need to fix my partner. She's having a meltdown. I need to fix this. And then, you know, my job's happened. I need to fix something else. You know, and it's uh, and if you can't, this is what um, a lot of the guys I work with that if they 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 that's the end of their world. You know, they they make it about them. I can't fix this thing, um, so therefore I am less than. You know, um, when actually some things aren't they're, they're not for you to be to fix it in the first place, and then that, that you can have to separate yourself from the thing and your identity. You know. Absolutely. But it's yeah. just, yeah, it's coming back to that. Man, are we too positive? Are you and I too? I don't know, maybe. maybe. <laughs> we should be more pessimistic. The world's fucked, yeah. everyone. We're, we're going yeah. down. <laughs> oh, God. Um, hey, Kev, I, I asked uh, this question to uh, a guest from last week's show. I was wondering if I could ask you to you as well. If there's one thing, you can say two things if you'd like, that, uh, that, that you want listeners to take away from the conversation today, uh, what would it be? Ooh, one thing I want listeners to take away from today. Probably that last point is to really um, pay attention to what, how your, your thoughts and your actions, where, where they're coming from. Mm. Where they're coming from? Are, are they are they geared towards level? Are they are they um, um, coming away from something or fearful? And also, the, the thought and an action is like, uh, especially coming away from something fearful, can mean that you are the you might be the action to numb it, or you might be the action to try and avoid it, and those types of things as well. So we do or distract ourselves or make ourselves busy when actually there's something else going on. You know, when everyone's busy, that kind of badge of honor, like oh, I'm. So busy. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was so busy. It's, yeah. It's, I think, uh, yeah, because there's been a lot and there's no, and my second thing would be, which is kind of links the two is like, um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of gold in deep, deep inquiry, deep self inquiry, which sometimes feels confronting and scary again, but it's actually, if you're doing it from a place of, or wanting to understand yourself better and create, and therefore knowing for while you're going to create something better, then um, or create something that I love, then it's um, definitely a worthwhile pursuit. Mm. I think that slowing down is what is what for everybody is uh, if they've chosen to have had to face within themselves. You know? mm. Mm. 
I love that, man. You, you have such a, um, a great energy about you. Like I find that I, I'm very easily influenced by the, the podcast guests that I have on the show. And sometimes I have people that are full of energy. I'm like, Oh my God, I've had 10 coffees. This is a crazy podcast. Uh, speaking with you, I feel very, um, uh, Zen, you know, I feel really calm. So it's, uh, it's great to have you, man. Well, thank you. Man. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah. It's awesome. It's good to go on. Yeah, it's good. Too. Yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun that we um, finally had the chat. What's coming up for you, Kev? What What are some things that are coming up on the horizon? What's coming up? Well, we're just concentrating on my men's, uh, men's work. We're going to do some stuff on. Um, I'm doing some trying to do some more podcasts as well. But um, yeah, we could be launching a series of um, products uh, for men's work from you know, and it's important for me to have something that is that's for everybody. You know, so at different price points, and that's um, that's where kind of our main our main focus at the moment, just to try and just to have a wider reach. You mm. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super important, dude. Where yeah, can definitely. people find you? What are, what are your links? Um, yeah, living for living for project. Um, I think that's living underscore project. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, you'll find. I'll put, I'll put it in the show notes anyway. But on Instagram, yeah, on Instagram, time. that's probably the best one. Or you can go just shoot me an email on um, Evan at the Living Full Project dot com. And I'm happy to to anybody on there as well. Brilliant, mate. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Pleasure, bro. Anytime. Really enjoyed that conversation. So thanks, thanks for the work you do as well. Yeah, yeah, mate. Love it, love it, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I'll speak to you next week. Bye. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the content, uh, you are more than welcome to click the link in the description below. That will take you right to a free webinar where I will be taking you exactly through how to design a framework for your life and create that mission that will bring about a sense of intrinsic value to you. Go for it.